When we think of giant sea turtles today, a lot of people might consider the leatherback turtle, a modern-day goliath reaching almost 9 feet or 3 meters in length and weighing 1,100 pounds or 500 kilograms. And that's if you'd even had this species on your turtle radar, as it's not quite as cute as some of its better-known counterparts. Despite the leatherback being a behemoth in modern turtle standards, we're about to uncover a creature so massive that even the apex predators of the late Cretaceous, like mosasaurs, might think twice before trying to take a bite. This marine giant has baffled scientists for years, not only because of its size, but because of its evolutionary craftsmanship. Let's take a look. It was the late 19th century when the first traces of this colossal turtle emerged from the Pierre Shale of South Dakota. The sheer size of the fossil fragments, featuring an almost complete skeleton excluding the skull, intrigued the paleontologists, as researchers painstakingly pieced together the scattered remains. What they revealed was nothing short of astonishing. A marine turtle so large, it stretched over 15 feet or 4.6 meters long and spanned 13 feet or 4 meters wide from flipper to flipper. The name Archelon comes from the Greek Arche for early, Cologne for turtle, and Iskaros for mighty or powerful. This name was very suitable for the hefty fossil they had just uncovered, and so the first mighty turtle, Archelon Iskiros, was formed. But one question surfaced almost instantly upon its discovery. Why did it get so big? Evolution had perfected the design of this turtle's bones, shell and body to allow it to grow to these mammoth sizes. Similar to how the famous Galapagos tortoise represents island gigantism on land, Archelon is an example of marine gigantism. This phenomenon, where marine animals grow significantly larger than their terrestrial counterparts, is thanks to the abundant resources and vast spaces of the oceanic environment. Archelon weighed over three tons, and the trade-off between its size and its energy expenditure worked perfectly in balance, providing a handful of benefits. The Western Interior Seaway, where Archelon lived, was a shallow inland sea that divided North America during the late Cretaceous period and was a catalyst for its oversized body. Stretching from the Arctic Ocean in the north to the Gulf of Mexico in the south, this seaway was hundreds of miles wide and teemed with marine life, forming a crucial part of the Cretaceous ecosystem. Archelon's gigantism was likely driven by the need to traverse these large oceanic distances, made easier by a large body size, more powerful appendages, and increased fat storage for energy across these migrations. Being large also gave Archelon a thermal advantage. Like modern sea turtles, Archelon may have been ectothermic, meaning it relied on external sources of heat to regulate its body temperature. However, its massive size would have helped it retain heat more efficiently, allowing it to survive in cooler waters and giving it a broader range of habitats to explore. Now, when we say cooler waters, this was probably around the tropical 20 degrees Celsius, or 68 Fahrenheit, cooler than the average water temperature at the time, but something a lot of us humans would pay to swim in in modern times. Archelon could have also used its shell to help absorb heat from the sun while swimming near the surface, maintaining a stable body temperature via a makeshift solar panel, the large surface area of its shell allowing it to absorb warmth more efficiently. This was crucial for saving energy in the relatively cool waters. Another reason for its size is the obvious predator avoidance. The giant turtle was in an evolutionary arms race with large predators like mosasaurs and large predatory sharks. The larger individuals of the Archelon population had a better chance of survival against these monstrous predators. And so this gigantism was selected for as a defense mechanism. By growing large, Archelon reduced the number of animals capable of preying on it. Additionally, larger animals tend to swim longer distances and dive deeper, which could have helped Archelon access new feeding grounds that smaller animals couldn't reach. But it wasn't just the size of this animal that gave it a good fighting chance in the scary sea that it lived. Archelon's shell was also an impressive feat of evolution, being lighter and more flexible than the classic green or loggerhead turtles of today. Instead of a solid, bony plate, like in many modern species, Archelon's shell was composed of a framework of thin, bony ridges, which supported a layer of leathery skin. This semi-flexible structure gave Archelon's shell a distinct advantage in the open ocean. 
a lighter, more pliable shell meant reduced weight, which in turn made it easier for this giant creature to float and move efficiently through water. The flexibility also helped Archelon conserve energy over long distances, making it an incredibly effective swimmer, an important consideration for an animal of its size. But even though Archelon's shell was lighter, it didn't compromise on strength. The network of bones that formed the shell's core was tough enough to provide essential protection. While the shell wouldn't have been as impenetrable as the solid carapaces of modern turtles, it was more than sufficient to ward off many potential threats. Its massive size alone acted as a deterrent to most predators in the late Cretaceous seas. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video as we're going to dive into the predator-prey dynamics of how Archelon survived some of the most ferocious predators of the time. Archelon's shell wasn't completely fused to its ribs, like the shells of modern sea turtles. In today's turtles, the shell and ribs are integrated into a single rigid structure which limits flexibility but compounds its strength. Archelon's ribcage, however, was more open and expansive, providing additional mobility. This design likely allowed the turtle to expand its lungs more easily, enabling it to take in larger breaths and stay underwater for extended periods, a key advantage for an ocean-dwelling animal that may have helped it reach habitats that its competitors could not. The shape of the shell was elongated and streamlined, reducing drag as it moved through water. This adaptation was essential for long-distance travel in search of food or nesting grounds, and it's similar to what we see in today's leatherback sea turtles. The bottom of its body, called the plastron, was thick with striations across its seven-foot length. This thickness likely indicates a bottom-dwelling habit, as it crept across the soft, muddy seafloor, searching for large bivalves and invertebrates of the time. And if you're enjoying learning about Archelon, please consider channeling your inner turtle and diving below this video to the like and subscribe buttons. We appreciate your feedback on the videos, and we'd love to have you join our journeys through prehistoric time, so please feel free to subscribe. Now back to the video. With the giant size of the turtle came a giant appetite. So what did it eat? No fossilized remains have provided direct evidence of stomach contents. But the design of Archelon's beak points to a diet consisting mostly of large marine invertebrates. It had an especially hooked beak with very sharp edges, functioning almost like a natural pair of tongs. Lacking teeth, it instead relied on the sheer force of its beak to feed on a wide variety of marine organisms. This adaptation allowed it to exploit several different food sources in its environment, making it a generalist feeder in the rich ecosystems of the Western Interior Seaway. Coupled with a sturdy jaw structure, scientists theorize a diet comprising hard-shelled animals, much like the modern hawksbill sea turtle, which feasts on corals and sponges. Along with the bottom-dwelling theory, and that its jaws were perfect for breaking through the tough exteriors of ammonites and crustaceans, this seems to be the go-to theory. However, its sharp and pointed beak may have been better suited to shearing flesh and slicing quick-moving prey. Its body characteristics don't quite line up with the theory of swift, precise movements for catching fish. But scavenging may have been a significant part of Archelon's feeding habits. Given its size and relatively slow-moving nature, it's likely that Archelon would take advantage of dead or dying animals that drifted into its path. Carcasses of large marine creatures, such as fish or marine reptiles, could have provided a ready meal. Archelon's sharp beak would have been effective in tearing chunks of flesh from these animals, making it an opportunistic feeder that could adapt to whatever food sources were available. Whatever Archelon's dietary preference, its home in the interior western seaway was abundant with options. While the seaway was teeming with prey from fish to ammonites, Archelon wasn't alone in its search for food. Its diet likely included jellyfish, mollusks, crustaceans and slow-moving fish, similar to modern sea turtles. But these prey items were also highly sought after by a range of competitors. Among them were other marine reptiles, particularly plesiosaurs and mosasaurs. Plesiosaurs, the long-necked, paddle-flippered reptiles, specialized in snatching prey from schools of fish and marine invertebrates. While their diets didn't perfectly overlap with Archelon's, they added pressure to food availability, 
especially in areas rich in prey. Even smaller marine turtles likely pose competition to Archelon. Species like Protostega, a close relative, occupied a similar ecological niche. Though they were smaller, around 10 feet long, they might have been faster swimmers, better suited to exploiting certain food sources before Archelon could reach them. The struggle for food in the Cretaceous seas was constant. Archelon's slow but enduring swimming style allowed it to forage over long distances, a key adaptation for surviving in an ecosystem where the competition for resources was fierce. What about predation? Mosasaurs and large sharks were Archelon's biggest threat. Mosasaurs were powerful hunters, reaching lengths of up to 50 feet. With their double-hinged jaws and sharp, conical teeth, Mosasaurs could crush through Archelon's leathery carapace or rip off its flippers in an attack. Archelon likely had to avoid areas where Mosasaurs hunted in packs or near breeding grounds, as a coordinated ambush could overwhelm even a fully grown adult. Sharks like Cretoxyrina were another serious danger. While a single shark might struggle to bring down an adult Archelon, a pack of them could do serious damage. Their serrated teeth were ideal for slicing through Archelon's unarmored limbs or puncturing its carapace. Sharks also posed an enormous threat to juvenile Archelon, which lacked the size and strength of adults. Juveniles were likely high on the menu for many marine predators. Speaking of juveniles, let's not forget about their journey to the ocean. Like modern sea turtles, Archelon hatchlings emerged from eggs laid on sandy beaches. These tiny turtles faced an immediate gauntlet of dangers. From the moment they hatched, they were vulnerable to predatory birds, small carnivorous dinosaurs near the shore, and marine predators like fish and small sharks waiting just offshore. The survival rate for young Archelon was undoubtedly low. Even adult Archelon couldn't fully escape the dangers of predation. Injuries, illness or exhaustion could make them targets. A weakened Archelon, struggling against strong currents, might find itself at the mercy of opportunistic predators. And in an ecosystem as dynamic and predator-rich as the Western Interior Seaway, there was always something hungry lurking nearby. In fact, it is likely that the evolution of new predators in water, the air and the land, all preying on Archelon eggs or new hatchlings, were a significant contributor to their extinction. This, coupled with the changing habitats, like the Western Interior Seaway, decreasing in size and depth, which in turn caused impacts for Archelon's prey and the food chain in general, all resulted in the eventual demise of this amazing turtle, the largest that ever lived. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing to join us on more journeys, and we'll see you next time.